an intoxicated would-be shoplifter who'd allegedly hit a parked car before entering a Walmart in Washington State was knocked to the ground after a customer confronted him. The incident unfolded at around 3 p.m. on March the 30th of 2021, when 21-year-old Troy K. Robinson casually strolled into the store in Federal Way City after the collision at the parking lot. Meanwhile, law enforcement were dispatched after receiving reports of the hit and run. Inside the store, an employee spotted Robinson approaching the exit while carrying an unpaid item. Consequently, the employee tried to stop him. This angered Robinson, and he threatened to assault anyone who touched him. At that point, a 21-year-old male shopper stepped in and confronted him, saying, you better put that down before I knock you out. Robinson dropped the item, and both men squared off. A few seconds later, punches were thrown before the younger shopper grabbed the suspect and wrestled him to the floor. A security guard approached the men and got the shopper off Robinson, who then walked towards the exit. Police, who'd just arrived at the location, placed the man under arrest. In the end, Robinson was charged with driving while intoxicated, hit and run, and attempted theft. Number 27. Body slamming and phone stomping. The New York Post uploaded a video on January the 7th of 2020, which showed a group of customers in Brooklyn Center, Minnesota, getting physical near the checkout section of a local Walmart store. While it was unclear what prompted the fight, the video showed customers slamming each other into the concrete floor. The woman who was recording the fight could be heard saying, Ooh, he just slammed him good. Several male suspects were exchanging blows as others tried to intervene. An onlooker was heard repeatedly saying, Stop it, it's not worth it, as one of the men continued to choke another man on the floor. One of the men involved dropped his cell phone, which was subsequently picked up by a young man who appeared to be associated with the individuals fighting. At one point, the young man was seen forcibly throwing the phone to the ground before violently stomping on it twice. The fight eventually stopped, but profanities were exchanged as the group moved towards the exit. There was very little additional information provided as the identities of the people involved and potential legal ramifications of their violent altercation weren't immediately disclosed. Just another day at Walmart. Number 26. A Walmart Manager's Love Triangle Two female Walmart employees got into a fight after they learned that their store manager, only identified as Wayne, had been sleeping with them both. Video footage, which was recorded at the store in Morrow, Georgia, showed a red-haired woman yelling and jumping demonstratively while being escorted away by another worker. The other woman, who had black hair, can be seen following her while screaming back. The black-haired lady subsequently used the store's intercom system to announce Wayne's alleged affair. She called the attention of everyone in the store and yelled the manager's name, saying he and the other woman had been trying to hide the ongoing affair. Another employee finally intervened and attempted to take the phone away from her. She hung it up and added, Fuck all you'll, before marching out of the store. The video was uploaded on TikTok in October of 2022 and went viral with over 2.1 million views. Number 25. Llama Knockout. A shocking video captured the moment a Walmart security worker knocked a customer out stone cold with just one punch after the shopper had apparently spat on him. The incident occurred on June the 1st of 2021 at a Walmart in Englewood, Colorado. In the video, the Walmart contractor and the customer engaged in an altercation that eventually became physical, at which point both men started to push each other. The clash quickly escalated when the male shopper rammed the security staffer with his cart, lunged his head forward and spat on the worker. Within a fraction of a second, the security guard then knocks the man out cold. Walmart spokesman Casey Staheli said that the man who punched the patron was a contracted 
third-party security worker and not a Walmart associate. In the aftermath, the man was banned from working at the retail giant's stores. Number 24. Leslie Nurse 36-year-old Alabama woman Leslie Nurse sued Walmart for wrongfully accusing her of stealing groceries. The employees at the store's branch in Sems had accused Nurse of not paying for some groceries on November the 27th of 2016. At the time, Nurse was with her family and had just finished using a self-service checkout kiosk when staff near the store's exit confronted her about $48 worth of unpaid items. The staff berated her during the encounter, asking how she could shoplift in front of her children. Despite Nurse's efforts to explain that her husband had paid the full amount of $122 with his debit card, she was taken to and held in a back room of the store. A sheriff's deputy arrived and informed her that she would need to monitor the sheriff's website for a warrant for her arrest. Ten days later, the warrant was issued and Nurse turned herself in at the county jail in Mobile, where she remained for a couple of hours until she was released on bond. The shoplifting charge was dropped in March 2017 when the store's asset protection specialist failed to show up to court, but Nurse said that she continued to receive letters from Walmart threatening to sue her if she didn't pay $200. In an interview, the woman said that it was a nightmare. Consequently, she filed a lawsuit, contending that she was falsely arrested on a shoplifting charge and that the ordeal had damaged her reputation on her claims that she was falsely arrested, imprisoned, maliciously prosecuted, and slandered. The jurors sided with the retail giant. However, the jury found Walmart liable for abuse of process. In the end, Nurse was awarded $2.1 million in punitive damages. Number 23. Walmart Brawl On the night of April the 1st of 2021, a Twitter video went viral showing a man who was purported to be former NFL offensive lineman Bruce Campbell get him pummeled at a Walmart. It was unclear what had caused the physical altercation, but the man was seen gesturing towards someone behind the counter while yelling, Do something, motherfucker! The other man, who was smaller, walked out from behind the counter and squared up with the instigator. The latter threw the first punch but was quickly overmatched by the man behind the counter. At one point, the smaller man punched him so hard that his head hit against the self-checkout machine. He then knocked the instigator onto the floor and pummeled him several times in the face. Twitter users reportedly blew up the narrative claiming that the man who'd taken the beating was a former football player. There was even one user who shared the clip of the brawl claiming that Campbell was taken to a hospital with a broken jaw because of the fight. After the video went viral, the former Raiders O-lineman set the record straight, insisting, no, that was not me. It never became clear who the men involved were or if any charges or arrests were made. Number 22. Keenan Jones Pennsylvania man Keenan Jones was convicted of wounding five people in a chaotic shooting at a Cheltenham Township Walmart on the evening of August the 14th of 2018. Jones was arrested hours after the shooting, which unfolded as he was waiting with his sister at a checkout line at the store located at the Thousand Block of Southeastern Road. As the 30-year-old stood there and for immediate reasons entirely unknown, he became agitated and paranoid and grabbed his sister's gun from her waistband. He pointed it at the shopper behind him, shooting the man in the calf. After the initial gunfire, Jones ran toward the exit, firing indiscriminately as customers and employees scattered in panic. He shot a customer service manager, striking her four times. Outside the store, Jones sped away in his sister's car, stopping only to discard the 9mm semi-automatic handgun, which would later be recovered. He ultimately crashed into a Philadelphia police vehicle parked nearby. Officers from the vehicle confronted Jones, who goaded them into a prolonged fight that left them with injuries. 
The suspect was later restrained and taken into custody. As Jones was being brought into the Cheltenham police station, he apologized, claiming he thought somebody was going to kill him. Authorities determined that the firearm was legally owned by Jones's sister. Thus, she wouldn't face charges. Fortunately, no one died from the incident. The following year, Jones was put on trial and found guilty of attempted murder, multiple counts of aggravated assault, reckless endangerment, resisting arrest, and firearm offenses, despite testimonies from both Jones's family and investigators. The motive for the shooting remained unclear. During his sentencing on January the 9th of 2020, Jones apologized to the victim saying he didn't have any intention to harm anyone. He added that he had no explanation other than what doctors had told him that he had PTSD, chemical imbalance and psychosis. His attorney, Vanessa Bellino, said that at the time of the shooting, the defendant was in the midst of a psychotic break and was pushed to insanity by the recent stress of his girlfriend's troubled pregnancy. Bellino added that the episode exacerbated his past untreated traumas, which included witnessing his father's violent murder and the murder of a childhood friend months before the Walmart incident. Before announcing the sentence, Montgomery County Judge Risa Vetri Furman said she didn't believe Jones had gone to the store to terrorize. Furman added that it was clear that the man had been suffering from his own demons. She further stated that the evidence, however, showed that his actions had been intentional. Furman ultimately handed Jones a 25 to 62 year jail sentence. Number 21. Scott Allen Ostrom Shortly after 6 p.m. on November the 1st of 2017, a shooting occurred at a Walmart supercenter in Thornton, a suburb of Denver, Colorado. Witnesses said that the gunman casually walked into the store and randomly began shooting at people. The store was left in what police called mass chaos as numerous people rushed out to safety. 66-year-old Carlos Moreno and 26-year-old Victor Vasquez was shot and died at the scene, while 52-year-old Pamela Marquez was taken to the hospital where she succumbed to her gunshot wounds. Immediately after the shooting, the suspect, later identified as Scott Allen Ostrom, fled in a red Mitsubishi Mirage. A tip called into authorities led to the capture of Ostrom shortly before 8 a.m. the following day. Officers spotted him driving in the same vehicle he used for his escape. Ostrom was forced to a stop at a traffic light when a SWAT team descended on him and arrested him. Thornton police spokesman Victor Avila said that the shooting was a very heinous act, adding that the exact motive was unclear. Ostrom's stepsister said that Ostrom had suffered brain damage from taking LSD at a drug party almost 30 years ago and had been hearing voices in his head since then. She added that the man's personality had changed since the party and further stated that Ostrom never received treatment from any mental health professionals. Nevertheless, Ostrom was found mentally competent to stand trial. He was initially charged with 37 counts, including three counts of first-degree murder, three counts of first-degree murder with extreme indifference, and 30 counts of attempted first-degree murder. In October of 2018, Ostrom pleaded guilty to three counts of first-degree murder and avoided the possibility of the death penalty. Weeks later, he was sentenced to three consecutive life sentences in prison without parole, plus 48 years. Number 20. Madman at a Walmart parking lot. In June of 2016, the Daily Mail reported about a road rage incident between a Colorado motorcyclist and the driver of a sedan which resulted in a confrontation at a Walmart parking lot. The biker, only identified as Devin, said that he'd been riding his motorcycle in a slow traffic residential area when he spotted a driver operating a white vehicle like a madman. Devin initially attempted to give chase, but he couldn't keep up. Five minutes later, the same car drove by again. This time, Devin followed the vehicle into a Walmart parking lot and parked beside it. Devin's helmet camera showed the driver exiting his vehicle, at which point Devin could be heard saying, How are you doing? Devin asked him why he was in such a hurry, to which the man started becoming belligerent and yelling out profanities. 
The man even added that he'd slept with Devin's mother. The confrontation devolved from verbal to violent when the man started hitting Devin's motorcycle. Devin warned the man that he'd have to defend his property. Nevertheless, the man smacked the bike again, prompting Devin to punch him in the face. The driver continuously approached Devin, who responded by pushing him away until he fell to the ground. Eventually, staff from Walmart ran into the parking lot and intervened before calling police. The video of the incident that was posted online ended with a text across the screen that said no charges were pressed in the aftermath. Number 19. Andre Bing Shortly after 10 p.m. on November the 22nd of 2022, police in Chesapeake, Virginia responded to a Walmart near Battlefield Boulevard after receiving reports of a shooting. The store's night shift manager, 31-year-old Andre Bing, had shot a co-worker and went to the break room for an already-in-progress routine meeting attended by at least 15 employees. According to employee Brianna Tyler, the meeting was about to start when Bing turned around and opened fire on the staff. Tyler added that she literally watched bodies drop and fortunately, she wasn't wounded. Jessica Wilczewski, who'd only started working for Walmart five days earlier, hid under a table. When Bing found her, he told her to leave. As she was leaving, she saw Bing shooting limp bodies to ensure they were really dead. Upon the first responders arrival at the scene, they immediately searched the building. Officers discovered a dozen victims, six of whom were hospitalized. The other six had already succumbed to their gunshot wounds. The deceased was 70-year-old Randy Blevins, teen Fernando Chavez Barron, 22-year-old Tanika Johnson, 43-year-old Lorenzo Gamble, 38-year-old Brian Pendleton, and Kelly Pyle, aged 52. Bing himself was also found dead. Investigators found a list of employees near his body. A joint investigation involving multiple law enforcement agencies was formed and a search was conducted at Bing's home, where a similar list of targeted victims was also found. Meanwhile, Investigators interviewed other Walmart employees who described Bing as difficult and known to be hostile to others. After investigators found a note from the shooter's phone, they believed that the motive was characterized as revenge for perceived bullying by his co-workers. A part of the lengthy note stated, The associates gave me evil twisted grins, mocked me, and celebrated my downfall the last day. That's why they suffered the same fate as me in the aftermath. Survivors, including Brianna Tyler, filed two lawsuits against Walmart, alleging Walmart had neglected safety in light of complaints of Bing's behavior. Tyler also asserted that she'd been specifically targeted in the shooting. As of November of 2023, a judge in the Chesapeake Circuit Court ruled that Tyler's $50 million lawsuit could move forward. Number 18. Hamid Aid Said On Easter Sunday 2013, Hamid Aid Said crashed an Oldsmobile Cutlass through the glass doors of a Walmart in San Jose. Prior to ramming the car through the store's front entrance, 33-year-old Zaid had made several passes around the parking lot and grazed the customer's vehicle. Zaid's cutlass then shattered the glass doors and went 10 to 20 feet in the store, which had dozens of customers inside at the time. Fortunately, none were struck by the vehicle, although some minor injuries were reported as a result of flying debris. Zaid then got out of the car and started attacking those inside with a steel pipe. He injured four people one of them severely, but no fatalities were reported. Customers were able to immobilize him as they waited for the police. Zaid was taken into custody and subsequently charged, among others, with two counts of attempted murder, four counts of assault with a deadly weapon, and two counts of felony vandalism. Investigators believe that he was intoxicated at the time of the crash. Number 17. Amber Stevenson and Rebecca Mills in June of 2015, Amber Stevenson and Rebecca Mills brawled in an Indiana Walmart, with the former encouraging her young son to take part in the fight. Stevenson claimed that the incident started after she'd heard Mills utter a racial slur to a store employee. Mills, who was riding a motorized scooter, then threatened said employee. Stevenson confronted her, and the women, both in their 30s, started striking each other and wrestled to the floor. At some point, 
Stevenson encouraged her six-year-old son, Johnny, to punch Mills in the head. The child, a reported martial arts enthusiast, did as his mother asked and also threw shampoo bottles at the woman. Security didn't intervene and neither did bystanders for fear of repercussions or potential lawsuits. Police officers arrived at the store in the brawl's aftermath, but no charges were brought and neither woman had been significantly hurt. However, following the release of security camera footage, which became viral online, Stevenson was arrested. For asking her son to take part in the fight, she was charged with neglect of a dependent, which is a class six felony and contributing to the delinquency of a minor. Number 16, Gava Family. On March the 21st of 2015, a brutal brawl broke out between police officers and eight members of a vagrant Christian family band. It occurred in the parking lot of a Walmart in Cottonwood, Arizona. The Gava family played together in Matthew 24 Now, with their band name being inspired by a Bible fragment referencing the end of the world. They'd been camping outside the store for several days. The 911 call had been placed following an altercation over the use of the Walmart restroom. At least one member of the Gava family had reportedly pushed a store employee. The responding officers approached them in the parking lot at around midnight, claiming they needed to separate them so that they could be interviewed. The proposition enraged the family and a brawl ensued. An officer was put in a headlock and dragged to the ground. A Walmart employee joined in the melee and engaged one of the Gavas in a fist fight. A struggle was then reported over one of the officer's sidearm. Three shots were fired, but according to the authorities, it's unclear who in the pileup had the handgun at the time. Sergeant Jeremy Daniels and 18-year-old David Gava sustained gunshot injuries to their legs but ultimately recovered. 21-year-old Enoch Gava was fatally shot in the head. Five of the Gavas, including the family's patriarch and matriarch, were arrested and charged with resisting arrest, aggravated assault, hindering prosecution and rioting. Number 15. Richard Lawrence Calvin. In 2011, an elderly man was beaten to death with a baseball bat inside the sporting goods section of a Walmart in Lakewood, California. 47-year-old Richard Lawrence Calvin, who was described as homeless, charged 74-year-old David Oakleaf and struck him in the head with an aluminium baseball bat. The security footage indicated that Calvin was already in the store and wandering the aisles with the bat in hand. After Oakleaf entered, Calvin attacked him without warning, inflicting devastating head injuries. While some sources report that the fatal bludgeoning had occurred randomly and unprovoked, others claimed that the men had previously interacted in the parking lot. Calvin had allegedly approached Oakleaf, asking for change, and had become angry when the elderly man refused to give him any money. Calvin was deemed mentally fit to stand trial and subsequently charged with one count of murder. Number 14. Massive Walmart Brawl In 2016, over the 4th of July weekend, a massive brawl occurred at a New York Walmart. It started after two teenagers mocked a 24-year-old woman's dress. All parties belonged to large families and up to 30 people started brawling. Some went to the sporting goods section to arm themselves with baseball bats. Fortunately, the police swiftly intervened before anyone got seriously hurt. Four people were arrested in the aftermath. They included 17-year-old Nika Brooks, who injured a 52-year-old man after throwing a can of food at his head. Number 13. Shooting of John Crawford III One of the most infamous incidents to have taken place at a Walmart in recent years was the 2014 shooting of John Crawford III. On August 5, two officers responded to a call that a subject with a gun was in the pet supplies area of a Walmart in Beaver Creek, Ohio. As he was browsing, Crawford was actually holding a BB gun that was sold in the store. The 911 call had been placed by a Walmart customer, claiming that 22-year-old Crawford had been pointing the gun at other people inside. Security footage would show him talking on his cell phone, but at no point was he seen aiming the gun at others. When police officers arrived at the scene, they approached him, believing the BB to be a real weapon. According to them, Crawford didn't respond to their verbal commands of dropping the item and lying on the ground. One of the officers then fatally shot Crawford in the torso, believing he was moving to escape. The incident was captured by security cameras, but the footage didn't clarify whether Crawford was shot before or after reacting to the police presence. 
No charges were brought against the two officers involved. The fatal shooting was followed by protests maintaining it had been the result of racial profiling since Crawford was an African-American male. His mother also claimed that the footage didn't corroborate the officer's version of events. Number 12. Murder of Melanie Lyons In January of 2021, a group of four girls fatally stabbed 15-year-old Melanie Lyons at the Lake Charles Walmart in Louisiana. The disturbing attack was live-streamed on social media. In the moments leading up to it, the perpetrators, aged 12 to 14, had been spotted in the kitchen aisle. Following a fight with Lyons, they used knives, stolen from the very store they were at, to attack her. They then bragged about it on social media, displaying no remorse and claiming they'd stabbed her through the heart. One of the attackers was heard saying, oh well, she dead now. Lyons was rushed to a local hospital, where she passed away due to her extensive injuries. The girls were later arrested and one of them, a 13-year-old, was charged with second-degree murder while the others were charged as principals to the killing. Number 11. Brawl over PS5 On December the 13th of 2020, two women were involved in a brutal altercation at a Walmart in Charlotte, North Carolina. A verbal fight broke out in the store's electronics section and multiple reports suggested it was centered on a PlayStation 5. The newly released gaming console was in short supply around the holidays, and with tensions high, the two unnamed women argued over it. As the confrontation turned physical, one of them managed to drag the other to the ground by pulling on her braids. She then got on top of her and started punching her in the head. Before she was eventually pulled off, she stomped on the woman's head, knocking her out for a few seconds. Security didn't intervene, and instead of trying to break up the fight, other customers opted to record it on their cell phones. Neither woman was identified, as they both fled before officers arrived at the scene. Number 10. Lewis Lane In June of 2020, a former employee at a Walmart distribution center in Red Bluff, California, shot up the building. 31-year-old Lane had been fired from the center in February of 2019 for failing to show up for his shift. It's unclear if the attack was solely motivated by a grudge against the company. After making several runs in the parking lot, Lane crashed into the building. After his vehicle erupted in flames, he got out and started firing a semi-automatic AR-15 type rifle. Employee Martin Haro Lonzano sustained critical injuries to which he succumbed in a local hospital. Six other people were injured but not to a life-threatening degree. Lane was shot dead after engaging responding police in firefight in which up to 30 rounds were exchanged. Number 9. Walmart mass shooting. On August the 3rd of 2019, Patrick Wood Crucis opened fire on a Walmart superstore in El Paso, Texas. Armed with a WASR-10 semi-automatic rifle, 21-year-old Crucis started shooting from the parking lot before entering the crowded store. Desperate customers were forced to hide and flee to other stores in the adjacent mall. Crucis gunned down 23 people aged 15 to 56 and injured 23 others. He then fled in his car and subsequently surrendered to Texas Rangers at an intersection. The mass shooting was considered one of the deadliest anti-Latino attacks in recent US history. Upon his arrest, Crucis himself stated that he targeted Mexicans during his killing spree. A manifesto, allegedly authored by Crucis, had been posted on an online message board. It had anti-Hispanic and anti-immigrant content while also supporting white genocide conspiracy theories. Cruz's defense argued that he'd been suffering from lifelong neurological and mental disabilities. In early September, Walmart announced that it would be removing handgun ammunition and some assault weapons from its American stores. On February the 7th of 2015, two women were involved in a violent altercation at a Walmart in Deep Park, Texas. The argument between Alice Keener and Jessica Albitz had reportedly started a day earlier while the former was working at the Jackson Hewitt kiosk inside the store. Tax worker Keener had reportedly insulted Albitz's husband, but she'd later claim it was a misunderstanding and that she'd made a joke during a conversation with a co-worker. When Albitz returned to the store, she and Keener got into each other's face and traded insults in a video recorded incident. Then as tensions escalated, 37-year-old Albitz leaned back and headbutted the other woman. Both then ended up on the ground where they traded blows and pulled on each other's hair. The fight 
footage of which subsequently went viral lasted only about a minute. As customers intervened to separate the women, Kina, a grandmother of four, initially declined to press charges, but ultimately decided to do so after a dentist evaluation concluded the headbutt had loosened her front teeth. Albitz was arrested for misdemeanor assault. Both women apologized and said they regretted their actions in the aftermath, with Kina telling a media outlet, I forgive her, I forgive myself, I'm done with it. Number 6. Isabel Jockson Teenagers Isabel Jockson and Malaya Powell were strangers to each other before they were involved in a verbal dispute at a Walmart in Nashville, Tennessee. In June of 2022, they exchanged words after Powell had confronted Jockson for stealing from the store, according to Powell's mother. The conflict continued into the parking lot near a WeGo bus stop where the two teens started fighting just before 10 p.m. During the course of the altercation, Jockson pulled out a pocket knife and plunged it into Powell's neck. She was taken to a nearby hospital in critical condition and later pronounced dead. Powell, a cheerleader at Bellevue Middle School, passed away before the police could interview her, but investigators identified Jockson as a suspect through footage from Walmart surveillance cameras. She was arrested by undercover officers at a Claiborne Street apartment. Jockson was charged with homicide and would be tried as a juvenile in the incident's aftermath. Powell's mother told a media outlet that her daughter's life had been stolen from her and urged parents to talk to their children about how to handle anger, hoping to spare other mothers and fathers from experiencing similar anguish. Number 5. Breeden Harvey On March the 19th of 2022, Florida man Breeden Harvey carried out a brazen attack on a woman as she was shopping at a Miami Walmart. 28-year-old Harvey threw the unnamed victim to the floor, then mounted her. He pulled up her skirt, tore off her underwear, and proceeded to grab at her thighs and privates. The woman screamed for help as he tried to further force himself on her. Cell phone video taken by other shoppers showed Good Samaritans as they rushed to intervene. One man, whom Twitter users only identified as Osvaldo C., hooked his arm around Harvey's neck and forcefully pulled him away from the victim. He and two other men were able to restrain Harvey as he struggled to break free and held him down until the police arrived at the scene. In the footage, which went viral in the aftermath, female shoppers were seen checking up on the victim, who was visibly shaken up. Harvey was taken into custody, charged with battery and initially held without bond. One detective subsequently talked to the media about the abuse attempt and Harvey, noting it wasn't somewhere isolated. He didn't care if it was in the wide open. His sheer disregard of the circumstances led the authorities to suspect he'd done it before, and they urged anyone with information about other possible attacks to come forward. Number 4. Thalia Huyen and Delina Bustos In mid-January of 2018, a video went viral on YouTube and various social media platforms of two women being handcuffed at a Walmart in Houston, Texas. One of them, later identified as 32-year-old Thalia Huyen, had her pants down, exposing her thong underwear, and was shouting about her back condition. The other woman seen on the store's floor in the video was her 18-year-old daughter, Delina Bustos. The incident had occurred on the evening of June the 21st of 2017. Huyen and Bustos were on their way out of the store when loss prevention officer Marcus McNeil grabbed the former's purse. Huyen would maintain that she didn't know McNeil, an off-duty Houston Community College police officer, was part of the store staff. A struggle ensued, during which Huyen's pants fell down, an occurrence she'd later report had left her feeling embarrassed and humiliated. McNeil called the Houston Police Department for support and, when two officers arrived at the scene, Bustos and Huyen were already on the floor. One of them used a baton to restrain the women a maneuver that an internal affairs investigation subsequently found to have been procedurally correct. McNeil would later claim that both women had kicked him while he was trying to detain them, which they vehemently denied. Huyen claimed that she was only trying to tell him about her back condition as she'd reportedly had surgery recently. She was nevertheless charged with assault and resisting arrest, while Bustos was charged with resisting arrest and robbery. Both eventually pleaded guilty to misdemeanor assault and were sentenced to one year deferred adjudication involving community services and paying court fines. 
Huyen explained they'd only admitted guilt because they didn't have the resources to fight the charges and she didn't want her teenage daughter to risk jail time. She added that Bustos had done nothing wrong and only pleaded guilty because they'd felt there were no other options. Number 3. Brandy McGowan On March the 30th of 2022, law enforcement was called to a Walmart on South US Highway 441 in Summerfield, Florida, following reports that a woman was threatening customers and staff with a brick and a knife. A responding deputy found 32-year-old Brandy McGowan, who was under the influence of at least four grams of methamphetamine at the time, standing in the clothing section. She was holding a pocket knife, which she'd stolen from the store, and rambling. As indicated by an affidavit, McGowan said she hadn't killed her family, but investigators found no reason to believe her statements were rooted in reality. Deputy Christopher Witt's body cam recorded him holding McGowan at gunpoint and ordering her to drop the knife. The woman didn't react and continued speaking incoherently. Then as backup arrived, Witt switched to his stun gun. He again ordered McGowan to drop the knife before shooting her as she was distracted. The woman collapsed backwards, stiff, bounced off shelves and landed on the floor face first. She was restrained and taken to a local hospital for evaluation after which she faced the charge of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon without intent to kill after Walmart had chosen not to pursue retail theft charges. McGowan had a lengthy criminal record across multiple Florida counties that included arrests for burglary, property damage, kidnapping, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon, and battery. Today's topic was requested by VidGirl88 and Jim Krause 1975 if you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. John Engerboss On July the 20th of 2018, 33-year-old Corey Richardson was leaving a Walmart in New Berlin, Milwaukee, with her two children, a nine-year-old daughter and a baby boy, who was in a car seat on top of her shopping cart. As she was preparing to pull out of the parking lot, the mother encountered John Engerboss, his empty cart, abandoned halfway onto a grassy median, was partially blocking her vehicle. Richardson asked him to put the cart away, but the 60-year-old man refused, claiming there were people who get paid to do that. Richardson then asked that he at least move it out of the way of her car, at which point Engerboss attacked her in front of her children. He pushed the woman to the ground, punched her, kicked her and pulled her hair. Engerboss also took her car keys and threw them away when Richardson tried to retrieve them during the struggle. The cart with Richardson's infant son rolled through the parking lot unattended. She was able to get him before Engerboss pulled out of his parking space and drove away, nearly striking her and her children, as well as a witness. When officers arrived at the scene, they noted that Richardson had visible injuries. Walmart surveillance systems had captured the incident, and law enforcement used the footage as evidence in charging Engerboss with one count of second-degree recklessly endangering safety one count of misdemeanor battery and one count of disorderly conduct. He eventually pleaded no contest and on February the 27th of 2019, he was sentenced to 90 days in jail and two years of probation. He was also ordered to undergo anger management counseling, a mental health evaluation, as well as to pay court costs and restitution. For those of you who are still longing for a bit more, we're tuning up our release about when shoplifters go wrong right after number one. Stick around if you'd like. Number one, Trevor King. Atlanta off-duty police officer Trevor King was at his second job, working security at a Southwest Atlanta Walmart on October the 13th of 2014. After purchasing his groceries, a man by the name of Tyrone Carnegie returned to the produce aisle to weigh a tomato for which he believed it had been overcharged. He put it back in his shopping bag and tried to walk out, at which point he was stopped by King, who suspected that he'd stolen the tomato. Within seconds, the security guard started striking Carnegie in the leg with a metal baton. He reportedly dished out the violent blows without asking Carnegie for a receipt or even telling him that he was being questioned. The baton strikes, captured by surveillance cameras, ruptured an artery and broke two bones in the innocent shopper's leg. He needed surgery in the aftermath and had a titanium rod inserted to mend the damage. King filed a report claiming that Carnegie had tried to push past him and reached for his gun belt, 
a version of events that was later proven to have been a fabrication. Carnegie was jailed for several days before the charges against him were dismissed. In 2017, King was found guilty in federal court of using excessive force and obstructing investigation, and he was sentenced to five years in a federal prison. Number 8. Larry D. Matthews In October of 2016, a Georgia shoplifter was tasered, pepper sprayed, and eventually gunned down following an altercation with a Bibb County deputy in Mason. Larry D. Matthews, age 55, had been accused of stealing several items, believed to have included a few Bic lighters and a pack of ramen noodles. From a family dollar store, he was confronted by deputy Greg Usury, who gave him several verbal warnings. Matthews, a man reported as having had a lengthy criminal record, attempted to fight Usury. He was first shot with a taser, but he pulled the prongs out and continued charging the deputy. The latter then deployed his pepper spray, but it didn't stop Matthews, who reached for the can. Usury then used his service weapon to fatally shoot Matthews. Several witnesses testified in the aftermath and an examination of the incident by the Georgia Bureau of Investigation determined that Usury wouldn't face any criminal charges. Additionally, an autopsy revealed the presence of alcohol and crack cocaine in Matthews' system. Number 7. Richard Lee Richards In late November of 2021, harrowing footage began circulating across media outlets of a suspected choplifter in a mobility scooter that was gunned down by an off-duty Arizona police officer working as a Walmart security guard. 61-year-old Richard Lee Richards was suspected of stealing a toolbox from a Tucson branch of the retail corporation. At about 6 p.m., an employee alerted security guard Ryan Remington, who was also a four-year member of the Tucson police force. According to a statement released by local authorities, Remington confronted Richards in the parking lot, asking to see his receipt. In the moments that followed, the latter allegedly brandished a knife and told the security guard, here's your receipt. As reported by another Walmart employee who was accompanying Remington at the time, Richards had been repeatedly asked to stop and surrender the blade, which he refused to do even after a second officer had arrived at the scene. Instead, he continued circulating through the parking lot and tried to enter a Lowe's. It was at that point that Remington opened fire. As indicated by his body cam footage, he shot Richards nine times in the back, causing him to slump over in his mobility scooter before dropping to the pavement. He then proceeded to handcuff the unresponsive man and ask for medical support. Richards was pronounced dead at the scene a short time later. Remington believed his actions, which Tucson Mayor Regina Romero described as unconscionable and indefensible, had been justified. He was fired from the police force in early January of 2022, and the shooting was reviewed by the Pima County Attorney's Office to determine if Remington would be criminally charged. Number 6. Aaron Bishop In 2009, a man who'd reportedly stolen a bottle of perfume at the Quadrant Shopping Center in Swansea, Wales, died following the forceful intervention of a security guard. 22-year-old Aaron Bishop was seen on CCTV at a Debenham store shoplifting a bottle of dupe, priced at around $50. Bishop had been a guardsman at Windsor Castle and a soldier with the Welsh Guard who'd reportedly served in Belize, Iraq, Northern Ireland and Sierra Leone. Once the theft was discovered, he was chased and pinned to the ground by four security guards. The offence that followed have known several versions, but by the time police had arrived at the scene, Bishop was already dead. Prosecutors would later argue that one of the guards, 25-year-old Sam Borden, had used excessive force and dangerous submission maneuvers in subduing Bishop. Shoppers would report hearing the former soldier begging for help and shouting that he couldn't breathe. One witness told investigators that Bishop had turned blue and was frothing at the mouth. When the bystander pointed to the security guard that Bishop was in distress, he would allegedly replied, he can breathe because he is talking during Borden's manslaughter trial. He maintained that he'd been doing his job and denied applying pressure to the victim's neck. He stated that because Bishop was shouting, struggling, and behaving aggressively, he'd interpreted his claims of not being able to breathe as an attempt to trick the security guards. Borden was ultimately cleared of manslaughter in 2010 by a Swansea Crown Court jury. Number 5. Eva Pena an off-duty police officer was arrested in Westchester County, New York, in 2019 after she was caught trying to walk away with hundreds of dollars worth of merchandise from a department store. 
37-year-old Eva Pena was stopped by a loss prevention officer from leaving a Macy's in Yonkers with several items in her possession. They included a pair of Tommy Hilfiger pants, a beaded sweater, a guest lace dress, and three other guest items. Surveillance cameras had captured Pena removing the tags from the merchandise, valued at roughly $360, and then stuffing it into her purse. The authorities were alerted and she was taken into custody on charges of petite larceny. Pena, an officer in Bronx Public Housing, had made close to $108,000 in 2018, according to the non-profit Empire Center. She had previously held a position as an integrity control officer, but the NYPD's Internal Affairs Bureau reassigned her, citing trouble in her own past, but didn't elaborate on the nature of said trouble. On Pena's behalf, her private lawyer pleaded not guilty to the charges stemming from the shoplifting incident during her initial court appearance. Number 4. Alicia Sabraski A shoplifter went viral in December of 2018 after her mugshot showing her extensive facial tattoos was released online. Law enforcement was called to a Walmart in Boardman Township, Ohio and found that 27-year-old Alicia Zabraski had been caught stealing a bag. Officers searched a purse and discovered a hypodermic needle, an orange pill, and a white rock-like substance. Zabraski admitted that the drugs were a suboxone pill and methamphetamine. She was charged with theft as well as drug possession and taken to Mahoning County Jail for processing. Zabraski's consequent viral mugshot would show her extensive facial artwork that featured a spider web stretching across her forehead and a sugar skull design on the eyes, nose, cheeks, and lips, reminiscent of the masks and face paint used during Mexico's Day of the Dead celebrations. Prior to being arrested for shoplifting in November, Zabraski was charged with obstruction of justice following an incident in Austin Town. Local police had noticed a Chevrolet Malibu running in the middle of the street at around 4 a.m. and the driver sped off upon being approached by officers. After a short chase, the vehicle turned into a home. A man later identified as Logan Doherty, who sported several face tattoos of his own, ran into the residence while Zabraski waited on the front porch. As members of law enforcement got closer to her, she allegedly told them, I am not moving, you're going to have to get me. She then started walking towards them, indicating she had a knife, but was arrested without incident. Number 3. Lynn May May Less than a month before she was due to get married, in the summer of 2015, a Walmart manager was killed by a shoplifter in Xianjian, southern China's Guangdong province. 27-year-old Lin Mei Mei confronted a man after he'd been reported of stealing food from the store. According to the Shanghai Morning Post, an undercover security worker had spotted the suspect, only identified by his surname as Li, picking up two boxes of snacks on the second floor. He then hid in a corner on the third level and began eating the stolen food. The security guards brought the theft to Mei Mei's attention and she confronted the suspect, accompanied by several staff members. Lee then ran away, prompting the mother of one and the security guards to give chase. He fled to the store's knife department, where he grabbed a blade from a shelf as the group was closing in on him, with Mei Mei at the front. When she got within range, Lee attacked her and cut her throat open with the knife. The woman collapsed and began bleeding profusely and one of her colleagues wrapped his shirt around her neck in what would ultimately prove to be a futile attempt to stop the blood loss. Mei Mei was pronounced dead at the scene. The vicious attack had distracted the others enough for Lee to escape the store, but he was eventually tracked down and arrested at a nearby village. Today's topic was requested by Shirley Pagan, Richard C., Grey White Rabbit 21, and Sonia Mabea. If you have any other topics you'd like to learn about, subscribe and let us know in the comments section below. Number 2. Kieran Church In February of 2017, a shoplifter suffered critical stabbing injuries after the bottles he'd stolen and hidden in his coat were accidentally broken in an altercation with a security guard. 30-year-old English man Kieran Church, who also went by the surname Hayes, was homeless and often stole spirits bottles to sell in order to support his drug addiction. On February the 9th, Church was stopped by security guard Jordan Rose from leaving a Sainsbury's in Trowbridge, Wiltshire, with bottles of brandy in his possession. 20-year-old Rose would later report that he wanted to avoid a confrontation as he'd spotted a syringe sticking out of Church's pocket. The latter returned the stolen bottles and was allowed to leave. In the afternoon, Rose was walking to a police station 
to hand in the surveillance footage from the shoplifting incident. It was at that point that he saw as the security guard Denise Thomas attempt to stop Church from walking away after he'd been spotted shoplifting two alcohol bottles from the supermarket. Rose pounced on Church from behind, resulting in both men falling to the ground as the shoplifter was knocked to the pavement face first. With the security guard on his back, the bottles inside his jacket broke. Glass shard pierced his body, resulted in three severe stab wounds. An ambulance was called, but Church ultimately passed away from catastrophic hemorrhage with the coroner recording a verdict of accidental death. Number 1. Nordstrom Shoplifting Incident One of the most massive shoplifting incidents to have recently occurred in the US took place in late November of 2021 at a Nordstrom in Walnut Creek, California. It was a culmination of a string of flash mob robberies to have been reported in the Bay Area throughout 2021. The organized form of theft, theorized to have been coordinated through social media, typically involved groups of masked individuals entering retail shops or convenience stores to steal various goods. A number of police officers commenting on the November case reported to have never seen a shoplifting incident take place at such a scale and involve so many suspects. Roughly 80 individuals raided the Broadway Plaza Nordstrom at around 9 p.m. while wearing masks and predominantly dark clothing. Some allegedly used crowbars and hammers to smash through displays. One employee was pepper sprayed and at least two others were punched and kicked. The well-planned operation unfolded within a minute before some of the shoplifters made their getaway in vehicles that had their license plates covered. Three people were arrested at the scene, but the authorities didn't disclose their identities in the immediate aftermath, nor did they mention the total value of the stolen merchandise. Thanks for watching. Would you rather win a 60-minute free shopping spree at Walmart or a 1-minute one, one at Neiman Marcus? Let us know in the comments section below.